Welcome. Today we're talking with Simon Powley, Senior Director, Head of Banking Advisory Services at Diebold Nixdorf. Simon, welcome and thank you for joining us at today's Banker Digest. Hey, Larry, great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Good. All right. Well, let's get started. Simon, in your work, you have the opportunity to talk with a lot of bankers. How have bankers' expectations changed over the past few years? Yeah, it's a great question, Larry. Uh, there's been a lot of changes over the last five years, not only from a certainly from a banker's perspective, but the customers and consumers that they serve, their expectations have changed. And as a result of that, there's been a lot of reaction and work done with bankers to be able to facilitate change. And, you know, I, I'd incorporate that into, you know, just a few things. One, you know, I think that there's a lot less customization going on in terms of processes and technology. There's a lot of streamlined efficiencies that bankers are very interested in being, that, that are interested in having it done. And I think that goes to a couple things. One is just making sure that there is an ROI and that there's a good understanding of customers and the technology and the things that they want to implement, initiatives and strategies are going to be very, very effective within their specific consumer base and that they're listening to their customers to ensure that they are uh, you know, implementing these things in the right roadmap, in the right order, in the right sequences to be able to do that. And by having less customization and doing a lot of things that are proven in the marketplace and by listening to their customers, you know, that allows them to be much more efficient. Uh, and I think there's a lot of focus on that specifically to make sure that, you know, things are streamlined and process oriented within organizations. And what I'd also say with that, and a, and a side benefit of making sure that that's something that they are effective with, it's also speed to market. You know, how fast can we react to that? It's, you know, bankers have had a tendency in, in years past and, and maybe a little bit still now of being very cautious and, and very adverse to risk just by nature and, and appropriately it's so, of course. And as a result of that, they've had kind of a wait and see attitude and, and we're seeing those things change. It's really once we make a decision you know, once we're willing to go forth, we know and we're very comfortable that this is the right strategy to fit the culture of our organization and to fit our customer base and our needs specifically to our value proposition. How well can we stand up and execute that in a very timely manner and in a relatively seamless fashion without using a lot of resources within the organization and without distracting us from other strategies and initiatives that we need to do that that are sometimes even more core functioned or core to our business. Great. Uh, thank, thank you, Simon. So once your firm has engaged a bank, how, how do you go about developing the recommendations for that bank? And, and what are some of the key steps in doing that? Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed uh, on my team specifically within our advisory services to have a team full of very accomplished bankers. And, and that really helps us in supporting our customers because we can really sit on the other side of the table, so to speak, and really understand the language and context in which they're operating. And obviously the, the problems that they're having and, and realistically, whether it be financial or technology oriented or all of the above, we can then make sure that we're tailoring our products and services uh, to show how they really fit from those solutions. And there's a lot of analysis that needs to be done as a result of that. And so we leverage the great skill set on my team. And again, very blessed to have them on the team uh, to really help them in terms of their problem setting. And, you know, traditionally right now, we're talking a lot about efficiencies. We're talking a lot about technology roadmaps. We're talking a lot about how can I do more with less when it becomes to FTE, not primarily because, you know, of wanting to eliminate or shed FTE, but in today's environment, you know, let's be honest, it's very difficult to find good qualified people to do the day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, things that your customers need for them to do. And that sometimes that's opening branches with the right staffing level. And so how do we have technology help us solve for that so we can continue to bring technology and these services to our customers. So it's really helping them become, you know, improve the customer experience while at the same time becoming more efficient. And, you know, that's simply said, but it's certainly not easy. And so, you know, my team really helps, you know, directly uh, have those conversations to be able to do that. And, you know, you know, I think um, I, I think that's probably where I would start the conversation is how do you really sit down and listen to your customers? How do you make sure that you're on the same page and how do you make sure that you're solving for the pain points that they really have? Great, great. Uh, thank you. So, Simon, uh, after you've completed your work, how do you help the banks implement those recommendations? 
Yeah, well, there's a couple different things. One, uh, let me touch on for a minute, Larry, you know, the, the engagement process that we use, because I think that's really, really important because, you know, we follow a pretty methodical process. We certainly don't want to jump to conclusions. We don't want to jump to the end state on how we make these recommendations. Let me talk a little bit about what we do when we're engaged with them and, and how we engage with them specifically to help support them. And I, because I think it's important, you know, we, we deal with financial institutions from some, obviously, <clears throat> the largest globally, certainly the largest here in the US as well, and all the way down to some of the small, you know, five, you know, branch credit unions or five, you know, branch banks and, in, in, you know, Midland, Texas, right? And so we get to see a myriad of those customers and so forth. And so, you know, we have the benefit of really having and sharing those best practices mm -hmm. of what we're seeing kind of across the ecosystem. And, and I'm always very surprised, you know, I, I run our customer advisory board here at Diebold Nextdorf as well, where we really listen to our customers and, and work through things together and share roadmaps and so forth. And there, when we have those conversations, both in a formal environment like that or a one-off conversation, large institutions are actually pretty interested in what the smaller organizations are doing because there's a feeling from them that, hey, they're more nimble. They can get stuff done. There's not the bureaucracy and there's not the, the, you know, the layers in the organization that you have to go to. When they make a decision, they may not always have the resources that the large organizations do, but they can move quickly. So what are they thinking about? What are they doing? Which I think is really interesting. And I, didn't, I haven't necessarily seen that in years past, but that's certainly a theme I've seen moving forward. And then, of course, but let's be honest, the big banks are the trendsetters, right? They're the ones that are large enough to be able to go out, do bold things with technology and bold things with their customers, take some chance, take some risk, try things out, see what sticks. And so the, the banks that are maybe, you know, you know, less progressive, maybe that's the way to put it, right? Or less as a change agent, so to speak, are very interested in what they've done. And they want to learn from them as fast followers. They don't want to go through the pain and anguish of what they made mistakes with, but they want to know the outcomes and what they've done really well. And so the first thing we do is really, you know, look at those better practices and share those conversations of what we learned. And that's always a good, robust conversation. And I think it sets the context to, hey, these are your problems and here's what's happening. The second thing I would say is we're, we're highly daily, daily analytic are very data analytical, right? And, and what I mean by that is we actually will go through and leverage their data uh, as well as our research. And, and we work with a myriad of research firms as well, Forrester and Nielsen, I, I, all the players, as you can imagine, be able to look at this stuff. And we look at that and actually we'll either leverage data that we have internally through our all connect data engine, which we collect from uh, our customers when their transaction volumes, or they share their data with us. We'll give them a, a formula and there's, there's different fields and so forth, of course, that we ask for them to fill out. And then we can come back and give them a true analysis of having a deep understanding of what's, what are the marketplaces, what's going on in the markets that you serve, specifically geography. What are the customer bases that you're serving? What's the segments? And what can we really expect as a result? And we're, we're quite good at this, of looking at how do you then go to market? And so what are, what are you, what's going to resonate well with your customer base from a technology perspective and initiatives? And what can you spec? You know, and you, you can carry this out as not only from an adoption standpoint, how well are they going to, to take to this technology? And what are the steps that you need to do to make sure that they are adopting? Because this is, this is an investment from banks. Uh, what do they do from that, but also help develop an ROI. So, you know, what are the measures and so forth that you need to do to make sure that you're doing that? And I think it's extremely important to quantify those expectations. And, you know, I've worked for very large banks and, and they're good at this, right? They, they're good at road, they're process oriented. They understand they're measuring things all the time in terms of that. Some of the mid-sized regional and smaller banks just don't have the same level of sophistication where they're looking at that from that perspective to be able to do that. And so we really dig into the data to really tell the story and look at that so when they go to market they can be successful with technology and i you know i think all of those steps are really important great great uh, thank you simon so with all that what's your focus um with your firm over, over the next say 18 to 24 months yeah, you know, our focus primarily is just to continue to get closer to the customer right now. Um, and I, I think all that, you know, it's very interesting to see the dynamics out of COVID. You know, people have been working remote for so long and have not been in the office space. And so, you know, of course, we've we've been in the same environment as well at, at Diebold Nixdorf. And so, you know, our opportunity and, and what, you know, Octavio, our CEO, has really, you know, challenged us with is to make sure that we're getting very close to our customers. And so for the next 18 to 24 months, we're really out there talking to our customers, 
understanding the hardship, educating them again on what's happening in the environment, how things have changed coming out of COVID, what are the trends that we're seeing coming out of that, mm -hmm. what are the technologies, so that they can roadmap properly and we can be aligned on that. And that doesn't mean roadmaps don't change, but building out a three to five year roadmap is extremely important. So we'll be getting very close and continue to be out face to face with our customers to really help and support them in the manner that I've kind of talked about today, uh, but also to make sure that they understand the relationships. And, you know, I, I truly believe that uh, in being a banker for so long myself, you know, the difference between a vendor um, and a partnership, it, it's very, very clear to me, right? And from a vendor's perspective, it's, hey, if I need something, I'm going to come to you and you can service and, and handle my request and get back to me in a timely manner. That's great, but the environment's changed quite a bit, Larry. And so now it's really about partnerships being proactive. How can you help me? How can you bring ideas and suggestions to me? How can we develop a dialogue to be able to uh, successfully accomplish whatever it is that we want to do on our roadmaps? And I think the partnerships that really get close to their customers and work through with that kind of process um, and, and that kind of support will be the ones that stand out and have the longest relationships. I know, I know that's what we want from ours. Simon, thank you for taking the time today to talk with today's Banker Digest and sharing your customers' accelerating speed to market expectations and how your banking consulting services help bankers succeed. Again, thank you. My pleasure, Larry. Thank you. Great. In closing, thank you for joining today's Banker Digest. If you have additional questions for Simon, please see the link in his bio.